Let's now study the form control, the most important control in a wind form application. Whenever we create a new wind forms project, it comes with a form, which is usually called form 1. So form 1 is generated automatically as the starting point. This form 1, you see here, and this is the tab of the form 1. If you accidentally close this tab or close the form, then you can get it back just by making a double click on this form1.cs file or you can simply right click on the name and select the first option open and so you will get your form designer back you can think of this form1 as an empty canvas upon which you design your application just by dragging different controls the form control has two different sides this is the first side which is called designer as you can see the text in the tab design right so we are in the designer mode the other side of the form is the code side and in order to open the code window or the code tab we simply right click on the form and select the view code option now you can see we have two different tabs a designer tab here we design our form and here we have code window where we write our c sharp logic and code so when we work in the windows form we constantly switch between the designer and the code. The code file is a basic class file with a namespace and inside that we have a form class. This form1 class is an instance of system windows forms dot form class which provides all the basic functionality of a window such as a title bar, minimize, maximize and a close button. So this form1 the form1 is actually an instance of the form class and inside the form1 class we have form constructor the form1 constructor this constructor method is called when we execute the application and this method further call an important method which is called initialize component this method is a very important method and it translates the visual components into code for example a button control is a visual component now on the designer let's say i drag a button from the toolbox window and put it on the form so as i put this button on the form it is inherited from the button class it has position on the form it has a size it has text and other properties right so all this information is automatically taken care by the application we don't need to worry about it now all the information i just named regarding this button for example the size of the button or the position of the button is actually gathered in this method and here we are simply calling the method initialize component this is this is simply a method call now the question is where is the definition of this method the answer is the definition of this method is actually coded inside the designer file you remember from the introduction i told you the designer file is the most sensitive file we shouldn't be there and make changes but we can visit the file and study its content. So let's click on the designer file. And here you will find the definition of initialize component method. You see a tag here, Windows Form Designer Generated Code. Just expand this tag. And here you will find the definition of the component method. And here is the auto-generated code for the button. So you can see as we drag the button on the form, some of the properties are automatically taken care by our program such as this is the location of the button on the form this is the size of the button the name the tab index and the text property so every control you put on the form has several properties which is automatically taken care by this application or the program so just like i said earlier this initialize component method translates visual components into code and here you see an example of that so let's close the designer file we don't need to add or delete anything manually in this file so this is a code structure of WinForms application and we don't need to make any change in this structure this structure will always be intact and we write our code inside this form one class and now back to the design let me just remove this button control you don't need it anymore now the form control has many properties as you can see in the property windows there are so many properties we will study some of the properties we set on the form the first property is the text property 
The text property sets the title that appears in the form title bar. For example, the title is form 1 and we can change this title using the text property. Let's say bank application. You can see the title of the form is changed from form 1 to bank application. Another important property is the start position property. A start position property controls where the form appears on the screen when the application is launched. And for that, we have several options. The most common option is center screen. So let's select this option, center screen. And now when the application launches, the form appears exactly in the middle of the screen. So let's run this application and check the output. Now we see the form in the running mode and the start position is exactly in the center of the screen. Another important property is the name property. The name of the control is always uh, programmatic. So scroll the top and here we will find the name property. The name of the form is form1. As we can see here, the name of the form is form1. If you want so you can change the name of your form from form1 to something else. But I recommend not to do so if you're only working with the one form per application. But if you have multiple forms, then you can simply name your form differently. So my friends, that was all about the form control. We studied the form control, the code file and the designer file. In the next chapter, we will study the button control and right after that, we will learn to code events.